Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. Assess the role of British imperial power in complicating the process of transfer of power during 1940s. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The outbreak of Second World War in September 1939 rapidly raised the status of Jinnah and the Muslim League. Linlitko saw the growing rift between the two parties as an effective weapon that the British could use for their advantage. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. The British wanted India's cooperation in the war without conceding too much in return. They viewed the martial Muslim race as more worthwhile for the war purpose than the party workers and politicians of the Congress. Number 2. So, Linlitgo encouraged the League as a useful counterweight to the Congress. When Linlitgo declared India's entry into the war without consulting the Indian leaders, the Congress ministries in the provinces resigned en masse in protest. Number 3. Linlitgo could now ignore the Congress as it was no more in power. The Congress lost the power to bargain. Number 4. The Viceroy now turned to Jinnah for support and encouraged the League to become a rival to the Congress at All India level. Jinnah thus emboldened past the Pakistan resolution at the League's Lahore session in 1940. Number 5. At this session, Jinnah propounded the two-nation theory. Interestingly, Linlitgo did not rush to condemn the Lahore Resolution. Number 6. The British, for their part, played the game of divide and rule as they had done since their arrival in India. Linlitgo saw advantage in encouraging the separatist tendencies of the Muslim League as a counterpoise to the nationalism of the Congress. Number 7. He saw the martial Muslims as more valuable to war efforts than the Gandhian pacifists. The British response to Gandhi's call of quit India was one of severest repression. Number 8. All the major leaders of the Congress were arrested and put in jail for a period of three years. By confining the leaders of the Congress for such a long period, the British government left the field wide open for the League to consolidate its position. Conclusion of the answer is In 1940, the idea of Pakistan was mere rhetoric, but by 1944, it seemed achievable. The Crips mission was another opportunity that the Congress blew up by its all or nothing attitude. The British, in order to appease the Muslim League, put the opt out provision for the provinces in the Crips proposal. Question number two. The product diversification of financial institutions and insurance companies, resulting in overlapping of products and services strengthens the case for the merger of the two regulatory agencies, namely SCBI and IRDA. Justify Let's start with the introduction of the answer. At present, financial regulation in India is oriented towards product regulation, i.e. each product is separately regulated. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. With multiple regulators in India, there are varying regulatory requirements which often leads to regulatory arbitrage. An example of this is the similarity between mutual funds and ULIPs, the first which is regulated by the SCBI and the second which were regulated by the IRDA. Number 2. SCBI imposes very different levels of disclosure and ongoing transparency on the outcomes of mutual funds compared to the standards of disclosure required by the IRDA. Number 3. In an example on differing standards of regulation on distributors, employees of banks who come under regulation by the RBI can distribute financial products such as mutual funds and insurance products without adhering to the rules and regulation of SCBI and IRDA. Number 4. The present arrangement has gaps for which no regulator is in charge such as the diverse kinds of Ponji schemes that periodically surface in India, which are not regulated by any of the existing agencies. Number 5. 
Organizations such as Chitfunds appear to be completely out of the purview of any financial sector regulator. Number 6. The existing framework also contains overlaps between laws and agencies leading to incidences in which conflicts between regulators has consumed the energy of economic policy makers and held back market development. Number 7. Securities and Exchange Board of India's SEBI, extended litigation against the Sahara Group and the recent investigations on alleged money laundering by some banks using insurance products are good examples of both regulatory gaps as well as opportunities for arbitrage. Conclusion of the answer is Reflecting these difficulties, the present Indian financial regulatory architecture has, over the years, been universally criticised and the Financial Sector Legislative Reforms Commission, FSLRC, has recommended creating a Unified Financial Authority, UFA, by merging the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI, Forward Markets Commission, FMC, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority, ILDA, and Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority, PFRDA. Question number 3. Access to affordable, reliable, Sustainable and modern energy is a sign qua non to achieve sustainable development goals, SDGs. Comment on the progress made in India in this regard. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. Energy is the key factor that connects economic growth, social equity, and environmental sustainability. Validating the same, SDG 7 aims to ensure that everyone has access to affordable, reliable, and modem energy services by the year 2030. The main body of the answer should be progress made by India. Number 1. To ensure affordable energy power tariff rates has been either subsidized or kept low for the agriculture and poor households. Under the Pehel scheme subsidized LPG connections are given to poor families so that they don't have to depend on firewood for cooking and also they have access to environmentally sound cleaner fuel. Number 2. Indian government has initiated towards installation of 40 gigawatts rooftop solar panels and subsequent abatement of 6 crore tons of coal to per year. Number 3. Dean Dayal Gram Jyoti Yojana was introduced to ensure regular power supply in rural areas. Besides Udirvala Discon, Assurance Yojana has been launched for the loss-making DISCONs. Number 4. To ensure sustainable energy, green energy is on the top of government's agenda. Number 5. Many schemes have been launched to provide subsidized solar panels, lamps, irrigation pumps, biogas plants. Also government has invested heavily in hydro projects, wind mills and other biogas projects. Number 6. To ensure modern energy families are encouraged to switch from the fuel wood kerosene to LPG and from the kerosene lamps to LEDs. Conclusion of the answer is Access to energy in rural areas improves the educational activities for children, quality of life for women and economic activities for men. With all the above mentioned initiatives Government of India is determined to achieve the SDG 7 by 2022.